Oh. <laughs> Hi, okay. everybody. Hi. Uh, uh, today we have a very special person. It's an artist, and also she has a lot of connection with the supernatural things. And with this, I can say she has a connection with the uh, past lives and also the soul and angels. So she's going probably to tell us what she think about these topics a little bit later. But right now, we are going to ask you, Sarah, Sa Sarah or Sahara? Zahara, yeah. Zahara. <laughs> If you can yeah. tell us a little bit of uh, your biography uh, that everybody can yeah. know you. Okay, um, I think I'll start with my name. So um, a few years ago, I think it would be three years ago, um, I was living in London and I was then seeing people for healing, energy healing, um, including a term called spirit release shamanic healing quite a spectrum and this person came and she was sitting uh on the couch and i said they're showing me i was seeing it in my uh within my inner vision so um but they showed like sometimes it's difficult to describe it, it merges what is the external vision in the physical and what is the inner vision but I saw behind her, so they, <laughs> pyramids. And I said, they're telling me there's pyramids in Bosnia. And unbeknownst to me, she was from Croatia, which is right by Bosnia. And she said, no, they're not. Yes, there are. No, they're not. Yes, there are. <laughs> and I said, okay, <laughs> maybe they're on the non-physical spiritual realm. I'll look it up later. She looked a bit triggered by it. I think it's because of what had occurred in the recent year over the, you know, the, the war. So any mention of Bosnia was triggering. Mm -hmm. um, I did look up. And if you don't know about the pyramids in Bosnia, do look them up. <laughs> um, it is a controversial subject. I have, I then went and in my experience, there are pyramids in Bosnia. Um, and while I was there, my, I call them my family of light, you could call them your guides, your spirit guides, um, said, your name is now Zahara. And I said, is that a thing? <laughs> Do people use that? Is that a name? Uh, yes, it is. I then um, looked on the internet, I typed it in. And it's from Africa, oh, the continental countries, Africa. and it means flowering in light. Um, I then didn't use it for a few months because I had a prejudice against people, a judgment of people calling themselves, what, <laughs> if I was going to be derogatory, woo-woo names. So like the priestess of Isis, of the Rose, flying over with an eagle person. And I, I thought, well, no, that's, you know, we don't want to appear um, really ego. And they said, use the name because it has a resonance which assists everybody to flower in light. So every time that name is mentioned, it will have a resonance. It's not for you, it has a, a resonance. And then I said, okay, I'll use it then. <laughs> so that's, uh, and I got a new passport a few months ago, changed my name. It's, that's it, officially, it's resonating. And I have many conversations with the postman <laughs> when I go to the shops. <laughs> um, oh, that's an interesting name. <laughs> and then they get this story. <laughs> yes. And, uh, that's I'm used yeah, to talking so, to a lot of people about this subject, spiritual subject, partly because of my name. Beautiful, <laughs> so, oh, beautiful. Um, yeah, you know, and it just goes from from there. But um, I was born in Zimbabwe, so I was born in the continent of Africa. Oh. Left when I was five, 
haven't been there since. Um, and I went to art college. I drew and drew and drew as a child. It kept me sane. My upbringing was very, I would say, uh, challenging, a lot of trauma, and it kept me sane. Um, I had a very vivid imagination. I loved colour. <laughs> uh, I loved nature. Mostly it was sort of semi-abstract what I created. Um, and art college was not what I thought it would be. It was very, um, I felt narrow-minded. It was what was in fashion. You could only do what was in fashion. There were certain philosophies that were fashionable. Literally, you would have to go to certain parties <laughs> to socialize with certain people, to get in the right um, network, to then have your work shown in galleries or, and the whole thing I just, um, in London, I, I didn't resonate with. So um, it was very conceptual. I liked some conceptual art at the time, but it, it was very cerebral. Um, there was a disconnection there and I left art college not wanting to do or being able to do any art. I would occasionally do one image every five years. I did physical theatre, I did mask theatre um, and I ended up um, doing social work and um, I train in child psychotherapy. I went on a journey to heal myself from the trauma of childhood. Throughout this whole time, I was very psychic. As a child, I was very aware of, like you said, past lives, spirits, people who had passed over. I would see fairies, beings, pick up energies. And I knew not to speak about any of that. Mm -hmm. Because of my trauma, I'll d I dialed down my psychic awareness. Because um, what can happen, or what happened with me, was because I had a lot of density, a lot of trauma, um, I would see that reflected externally. I would be drawn to other people who, was who were holding similar resonance, similar trauma, I would see it. I would unconsciously seek it out. I'd feel it, draw it. To, so I had to shut everything down because I would go, oh, look at that person. Oh, look at that. I can feel that. Oh, that's happened to them. And it, it got too much. Um, but I couldn't totally dial down. Uh, that's not, uh, I couldn't totally do that. Um, and so then later on, I op opened things up again. Um, and uh, yes, and uh, moved away from the social work and the child psychotherapy. I was working in schools in London for a number of years. Okay. Um, and then now I do what I do, which is the healing work, which is the visionary art, um, and which is also with the sounding and a, a lot of things I do full time. I'm very blessed. <laughs> so.